the man of science. Carl Sagan is probably the best-known astronomer and scientist, one of them in the world. He's a professor of astronomy at Cornell University. He's a Pulitzer Prize-winning author. Carl Sagan is, is one of the greatest scientists and authors of all time. Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan who? Astronomer Carl Sagan. The stars are nothing but Carl Sagan's eyeball. His sight in the sky. by seeing to the very edge of the cosmos. I have a friend in Denver who talks like Carl Sagan, and everybody says, I love the way you talk like Carl Sagan. Occasionally he does a Frank Sinatra, but mostly a Carl Sagan. You know, we love him because of that, and uh, we tolerate him because of that. And how big the universe is, and how small, and how much, I mean, ours is like a, a, a millionth of a second in size to the length of the universe and what it takes to get across it. It's billions and billions of stars. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> probably his most famous line. Could you please examine this hat and show that it's empty? Put the empty hat down. Could you please check that there's, uh, the table is okay, that there's nothing around. Pull off. And here, this is what we can't make. But we've only just started. We can certainly think about it perfectly well. Do we live in a universe which expands forever? Or in one where there is a nested set of infinite cycles? There's a way to find out the answer to that question. Not by mysticism, but through science. I remember watching a documentary with Carl Sagan the 80s and they were they were talking about the similarities between Star Trek and the Cosmos documentaries. The similarities between fact and fiction and beyond our world, what else is possible? Well, again, very difficult to estimate. But there is a way to do it. There is a region on Venus where temperatures are greater than 600 degrees Fahrenheit. There have been suggestions that it's a large swamp uh, filled with all sorts of prehistoric animals. Uh, that, of course, would not be if it were at 600 degrees Fahrenheit. If there is life on Venus, it is probably of a type that we cannot now imagine. The interpretation of what the universe really is. It's remarkable that the molecules of life are littering the cosmos. Yeah, I was subbing at the high school, this is a couple years ago, and I had the cosmos, cosmos, the book, on my desk. Writing is perhaps the greatest of human inventions, binding together people who never knew each other, citizens of distant epochs. Books break the shackles of time. The price collection of our books is anything by Carl Sagan. I've read some of your books, not all of them. I'm about half through this one. Not only was Carl Sagan a phenomenal scientist, he had a way with people. To this day, to this day, I have this duty to respond to students who are inquiring about the universe as a career path, to respond to them in the way that Carl Sagan had responded to me. I just remember him on the PBS channel. Just little short things they used to do on TV and the stars and the, the sun. thing we always, even today, we still say billions and billions, and he had that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Carl Sagan, I remember that. I watched too. I need to listen to him. Wonder. hundred billion other galaxies, each of which contains something like a hundred billion stars. Shut off these pods and take directions and we go endlessly. Magic was everywhere. It's been a while since I spoke, I mean, uh, spoke about Carl's. Astronomers sometimes say that space is curved. He could relate to anyone. He was speaking with. May I call you Carl sure. as opposed to doctor or anything like that? As long as you know the name, that's all that matters. Oh, the Sagmeister. He was fantastic. And he's missed. He's greatly missed. Uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot of people with his enthusiasm and passion anymore, and or his intelligence, which is kind of a loss to us all. He will always be missed. Whatever Carl said, it was fabulous. Thank you so much. Great ideas. Every moment, and every. Every inanimate object, uh, to say nothing of, of the exquisite complexity of, uh, of living beings, 
uh, yeah, uh, you, you imagine missing it all, and suddenly it's so much more precious. You thought. Yes, Carl, thank you very much. Pleasure. And infinity can be represented like this.